All right, guys, we are here for the Week 10 media availability with defensive coordinator inside linebackers coach Peter Sermon prior to Saturday's matchup up at number six, Oregon. We will go ahead and get questions started with Jeff Ferrato from Cal Sports Report. Good morning, uh, Peter. How you doing? I'm doing well, Jeff. How are you? All right. Can you uh, just talk about uh, Cade Uluwabe? And um, he's, he's really kind of come on, was burst the last several weeks. And um, did, what did you expect from him coming into this year? Did you have any sense that, that he would emerge the way he seemingly has? Well, uh, you know, it's a, it's a good thing to talk about. I mean, Cade was a, a, a really talented player, I thought, out of high school. Um, you know, he, he played on both sides of the ball. Uh, I think we were one of the first ones to, to kind of get in on him. Um, and I had a chance to go see him in person. He really showed some uh, some burst some, and burst and, uh, some different kind of tools that really kind of intrigued us. Uh, and then he really played a, a, a severely shortened senior year due to an injury. Uh, so the last film we really had on him was from his junior year. Uh, and then he ended up having a nice track season. Uh, I think he ran in the low, I think he ran around 11, 3, 11, 4, and then uh, threw the shot over 50. So there's not many people that have that combination. Uh, so we're really excited about what his tools were. But Jeff, to be quite honest, you never know with an incoming freshman, uh, the way they handle uh, school, uh, the playbook, you know, being away from home for the first time. There's so many uh, other factors that kind of go into uh, what a young man's uh, early success is, uh, you know, so that we, we thought we had a, a high character guy. We know we have a high character guy and, and uh, we've kind of brought him along slowly. Uh, we did lose him for a couple weeks. Uh, the offense, uh, uh, we loaned him to the offense for a few weeks uh, when he was playing a little bit of running back. And then uh, when we got him back, and, and uh, he's been fun to watch. Uh, he does, uh, you know, he runs around well. He uh, has the opportunity to, to continue developing, and, and uh, we're excited about his, his maturity and his growth. Is there anything in particular that he's done that's earned him this, this opportunity? I think he has the, uh, the necessary skills to go out there and not necessarily be perfect um, in terms of what he's experienced, but... Uh, he has nice instincts. He has a uh, uh, good strength, and he has you know you've probably seen the kind of the burst and that explosiveness he has to the ball that that uh, you know even as an inexperienced player he does have uh, a really good uh, skill set of being able to finish versus top level comp uh, competition. Yeah, thanks. All right, we'll go to Jake Curtis from Cal Sports Report. You played at Watson. Is there any reason besides the obvious that Oregon's been really good? Uh, that Watson Stadium is so tough to play in. Well, I, you know, I think they do a nice job of of uh, getting the community involved. Uh, there's not a lot of empty seats, uh, if ever, at that stadium. Um, and then, you know, I think the way it's kind of designed, it's a, it's kind of a sunken down bowl. And uh, you know, they 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 play well. Uh, the community supports them. Um, and you know, I think that's that's all you need to know about you know, kind of that environment. All right, guys, if you have more questions for Coach Sherman, go ahead and put it in the chat now. We'll go back to Jeff Ferrato. It seems like every week, Peter, we ask you about the uh, latest terrific quarterback that you're facing. Um, you can talk about Bo Nix and how what distinguishes him from the from the rest of these guys. 78% uh, completion percentage. Got to be a little uh, daunting for you. Yeah, it's 78% uh, percent completion percentage. And, and am I right? There have been two turnovers on the year. Is that on a fumble. Lead the nation, lead the nation in fewest turnovers. He's got one interception and 21 touchdowns. Yeah, and then uh, I don't know if he's been sacked with any regularity uh, either, right? So uh, you're not turning the ball over. Uh, you're completing the football. You have a um, fantastic run game. Uh, you know, shoot, uh, I'm I'm trying to uh, to find, you know, uh, of the unit. You know, there's always uh, there are always strengths and weaknesses. Uh, I'm still. I'm still trying to find a weakness. So how does a defensive coordinator go about sculpting a game plan to face a team that can do this many things this well? Yeah, I think you have to be really, uh, you have to be very mindful of, of kind of what we're asking our guys to do, uh, you know, identifying the matchups, identifying really how you want to, how you want the game uh, to present to the offense with, with what you're going to put on the field. So I think that's, that's the, the number one thing. 
and really regardless of the offense, uh, number one thing is, you know, trying to identify the strengths and weaknesses of your own team. Um, and then from there, I think you're always trying to accentuate the things that you feel you do well and, and try to, to hide or minimize, uh, you know, some of those exposure points that, that you feel like the, the group that you put on the field, uh, you know, aren't necessarily their strengths. So I think we start from that point uh, every single uh, week of, you know, what are we doing well? Uh, where are we at in the season? And sometimes there's a lot of different levels to that. There's, uh, you know, the competition which you're playing, their health, you know, uh, environment. So there's a lot of different, a lot of different factors that go into that. Uh, we're going to continue to put our guys in what we think the best situation for them. Uh, we have to continue to play with fantastic effort. And just because uh, a team hasn't uh, given the ball away, uh, you know, we, we realize that, that football is a very, very fickle game. Uh, football is an emotional game. And a lot of different things go into to how you play. And we're going to do our very best to, to go up there and play with unbelievable effort, uh, great passion. And when that ball's in the air, we want to go attack it. When that ball's being run, we also want to go attack it. You obviously know this. You had no sacks in Pac-12 games until Saturday, and then you had four. Can you talk about what changed? Was this people play better, or did you tweak your scheme, or how did it happen? Uh, we had a couple opportunities that uh, we got the quarterback to hold the football, um, and then some guys some guys won. Uh, Cade had a sack, uh, you know, that uh, you know they kind of got lost in the protection of where he was at. Uh, you know, and it's really just – uh, you, you try to identify uh, ways to help guys. You try to identify, um, you know, how, how can we get them to hold the ball. Uh, but when you when you kind of step back away from it and you create a little uh, probably emotional distance, it's guys winning one-on-ones. I mean, it's uh, as a coach, uh, you're always trying to find explanations because we get in these situations that the, the questions are asked and you feel like you have to uh, come up with some elaborate uh, answer to them. Uh, when guys win one-on-one -on -one matchups, when you play with fantastic effort and the 11 guys all play with some semblance of, of doing it together, then you find opportunities for, for guys to finish plays. Great, thank you. All right, we'll go back to Jay Curtis. How would you assess how the defense has played this season? Uh, not up to what we believe uh, the, um, the standard is here. Uh, there's been a lot of ups and downs really, uh, Jake, and it's, uh, you know, I thought the first two games, uh, I thought we played with tremendous effort against uh, North Texas and Auburn. Uh, there were things that you always want to clean up. And then, unfortunately, we've hit a rut of, you know, there's been some significant points uh, scored against us. And uh, we had some early takeaways. We were extremely efficient taking the ball away uh, the first few games of the season. Uh, and then, you know, it's, uh, I think it's probably been a blend of us not playing up to our our standard um, and you know really it's I, I don't think it's an easy thing to identify and put your finger on uh, some of it has to do with who you play um, and and some of those matchups uh, you know were were matchups we didn't do a great job with um, you know so I think there's a lot uh, to be identified in, in what we're going to do uh, continuing to get try to move forward uh, you know and how we want to continue to tweak and, and build uh, the system in which we uh, run. So I think there's a lot of things that, that we need to take a, a good long dive into uh, the conclusion of, of the season. Uh, but the the product right now uh, and what we're doing um, needs to be better. You know, my really my number one job uh, when you really peel everything back, I think is, is one thing, and that is to minimize scoring. Uh, and we need to do a better job minimizing scoring. And it doesn't matter if you get a short field because nobody cares about a short field. It's all about points, and it's all about uh, you know getting the, the end product to be uh, a product that you think can help your team win. And right now, we need to do a better job of helping our team win on defense. All right, we'll go to Thomas Dunn from Redford, California. Uh, <clears throat> good morning, Peter. Another like, group for Oregon that's not necessarily, or like, they get love, but they're not having a credit to this point. But how much of a difficult task will it be for the defensive line to win one-on-ones against that Oregon offensive line that just bulldozes for Bucky Irving and helps wrap around when Bo Nix is on the zone read? Yeah, I mean, it, for, for an offense to be this efficient, uh, you know, everybody has to be playing at a really high level. The guys up front at Oregon, uh, they're, they're, they're big, physical, strong uh, players. Uh, they run the ball big, physical, and strong. Uh, I think the one of the most exciting guys I've unfortunately had a chance to watch is, is Bucky Irving. Uh, his balance, his strength, 
uh, you know, uh, really hats off to the to him as a player. I mean, uh, really exemplifies what you would want at that position. Um, try not to give him too much love here as an opposing coach, but uh, he's strong. He, he breaks tackles. Uh, he plays with good energy. So uh, he's a fun person to watch, um, and he's surrounded by really good players. Bo Nix is a, uh, as good a player as you'll find in college football. He manages the game. Uh, you know, he looks like he's got great – uh, mastery of what they're trying to do on offense. He's out there running the show. He's checking, you know, he's changing things. Uh, and it's not all look over stuff where, you know, the, the coaches are playing Madden with him. He's playing, you know, he's playing pro football out there and making some really good decisions. They, they've done a fantastic job of, of finding some skill positions, uh, players and get them the ball. So they've, they've done a really nice job of building their offense and, and playing to their strengths. Thank you. We'll go back to Jeff Ferrato for a final question. Yeah, uh, getting back to Cade Uluwabu for a moment. How long did he practice with the offense? Um, did, did he do both at the time or just was only with offense for a while? And was there actually a tug of war about where he'd wind up eventually? Well, once uh, I'd have to go back, look, Jeff, and actually what, what segment of the season that was. Uh, I believe it was post Auburn, I believe it was post Auburn for a couple weeks that uh, Aristotle, Coach AT, had him. Um, you know, and and he's you know really kind of came out of uh, the function of of trying to identify you know who else in the roster could potentially help us in the event of uh, some unfor unfortunate unavailability at, at a position. Uh, and you know, really the first thing that kind of jumps out is is how he moves and and some of those things that that uh, any coach can observe. And some of the offensive coaches observed it, and you watch his film uh, when he was a junior. He had some, uh, you know, he, he was a guy that could return uh, kicks. You know, I think he had a, a kickoff return for a touchdown as a junior. That was a really, really uh, pretty neat play f to, to see on film. Uh, and then, you know, I think uh, Coach A.T., uh, I think he would take him in a heartbeat. So it's, it's really between me and A.T., but uh, at this point what he's doing on defense uh, I'm a little bit bigger in AT, so I think I'll have a little advantage if uh, if it becomes a tug of war. It would be a lot to put on a freshman to have him play on two sides of the ball. But is it the kind of thing where as he gets older and kind of settles in, there might be an opportunity for him to be a two-way guy to some degree? Boy, uh, you know, Jeff, that would be – that'd have to be kind of a, a, a big picture. That would be a Justin question of, you know – what else is on the roster, I guess. I mean, I guess you'd have to exhaust every every opportunity uh, you have as a coach is to try to do whatever you can to team to help the team win. Uh, you know, but I just, you know, that would be a, a, a question probably at a later date of, of what he continues to develop into. Um, you know, I know uh, for us on defense, I feel to be an efficient, uh, an efficient player for us on defense is going to be uh, a significant investment to be able to do that. Uh, you know, you watch, you know, the kid at Utah is doing it right now, right, Vaki? Uh, and he's had he's had some success. So, uh, you know, there are guys that have that uh, ability, uh, you know, but going forward um, as a as the defensive coordinator, I'd be I'd be real protective of those guys taking too many shots on offense if we expect them to help us on defense. You know what his 40 time is? Uh, I do not know. I don't know. But uh, I guess. Uh, you know, we'll get in this off season. We'll probably put a bill to put a, a clock on them. One of your faster linebackers, though. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Thanks. All right.